Hi guys, this is Krista from Mosaic Party and Event Design here today to show you a cookie craft. So I am a hobby cookie artist. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Sugar Bee Cookies. And I will make sure to put the link in the description of the video. Today I wanted to show you how I'm making these super fun beach and surf cookies. So they have some textured waves some sandy beach and I might add a little crab or uh, flip-flops or a beach ball onto this later on I'm not sure I'm doing a tropical party platter of cookies so I'm doing some beach ones some palm trees and a bunch of other sort of tropical things so be sure to follow me on social media and you can see the picture of the completed project when done for this, you will need some sugar cookies, some sanding sugar. In this case, I'm using a light brown sugar that I've let set out to dry for a day with just a little bit of parchment paper over top, just to help get some of the moisture out of it. And it's a little easier to work with when it's a bit drier. You can also, like I said, use sanding sugar. You could also use crushed up cookie crumbs. It makes for great sand. Um, you will need some corn syrup. I'm working with a clear corn syrup here. Some royal icing. I have four different colors. I have the tan, the white, and two color blues. A scribe tool or a needle nose tool. You can also use a toothpick. This is just to help move the icing around when you're leveling and flooding your cookie. Very handy tool. I suggest you invest in one if you want to do cookie art. And then I have three paint brushes here. One is going to be for creating my textured surf. One is for my corn syrup application and one is to just clean off the cookie when done. So it's a nice dry brush. So let's get started. I will clean these up a bit. And make some space. I'm actually going to be using these cookies for another design, so I'm going to set these aside. i move some of these away too. And for the sake of the video, I'm going to be doing using this cookie. So you can see it already has some of the design patterning on it. I've gone through with a little bit of uh, food coloring and vodka, which helps uh, dry out the moisture when you're applying it to something for, for cookie art. And I've just kind of pre-done my template a little bit. I also started to ice this one a little bit and uh, had to scrape it off just because my camera ran out of battery when I was filming a few minutes ago. So. Just thought this would be easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. And then what I'm going to do is when all of a sudden done, I'm going to show you how to sand the cookies and talk about and show how I'm applying the surf. So to start, let's talk about our royal icing. You want to work with a probably an 11 to 14 second flood icing. What that means is that when it's in your bowl and you've thinned it out for flooding, is that if you take a sharp tool like a knife for the edge of a paintbrush and you cut a line through the bowl of icing, it takes about 11 to 14 seconds for it to completely heal up and level out. Now, for whatever reason today, I think I put in a couple drops too much water, so my icing's probably closer to a 10 second, which is a little too loose. Um, I wouldn't recommend it, but we're going to make the best of it and hope it works well. It has been working fairly well, but you risk over flooding your cookie when it's uh, too thin. If it's too thick, then it doesn't do some of the techniques that we want today, which is marbling and blending the colors together. So if you've cookie decorated before, this is basic information. If you are just starting out, Practice makes perfect, honestly. But some tips I can give you is don't put too much icing in your 
icing bag. You want it to fit nicely in the palm of your hand. It gives you the most control. When you have it over full, it's harder to control and your hands will hurt a lot more in the end if you have any trouble with your um, hands, uh, arthritis or any tendon issues. You always want to keep a damp cloth. This one is only used for sugar arts. Close at hand to keep your tips clean. And I'm just going to show you on my surface here. But all we're doing, I'm going to create a, a wavy line. So you want to touch down to your surface, gently squeezing, and lift up while you're gently squeezing. Oops, see? I don't claim to be an expert. <laughs> I claim to do this as a passion and a hobby. So clean your tip. Gently squeeze and touch your surface. Lift up while you're squeezing and applying even pressure. And then you touch back down. So you want to lift away from your surface, not too high, but probably about three quarters of an inch, maybe half an inch high. And that's going to give you a natural dropping line that you can control and touch down. So that's what we're going to be doing today is creating some borders and then flooding it in. Sorry guys, I'm just going to wipe up here. <laughs> Making more of a mess probably. Okay, so we're going to start with our sand. And clean off the tip. We're going to just touch down to our cookie surface and using that same technique of lifting up and letting it fall naturally and dropping back down on the cookie. You can see how easy it was to follow that line that I had preset. Now you do want to leave a little bit of an edge on your cookie because when you flood it, especially if your icing is too thin like mine is today, it's going to, to fill out a little bit more as you go and you're going to be pushing this line back as you fill it too. And you're just going to flood your cookie. Don't worry about over flooding it to get all those little cracks and seams that are appearing because those are going to fill out as it starts to level out. You're going to take your scribe tool And I actually use just little circular motions around the edge of my cookie. It helps push and pull the icing where I want it to. If you need to go back in and add a little more, you can. Just be careful not to over flood it. And you can also tap your cookie. help the flooding. I probably could use just a little more in it but I'm not too worried about the sand because I'm going to be covering this up so I actually don't care if there's a perfect flood on this. If you're flooding cookies for decor that has nothing covering it then you want to make sure that you have a nice even coat. So because we're going to be marbling which means blending the colors together um, we want to work fairly quickly, so I'm going to put my white in. It doesn't matter if I'm completely following the lines that I had before. My white is a little looser than the tan icing, I can tell here. Fill that in. Get our blue. Our light blue. And then I'm going to add some of this dark blue. So you can see my edges aren't quite leveling off here, and I'm going to use my scribe tool. So pull my icing up, clean off the edge, and to do the same, just a 
love it all out here. Clean up my edge a bit. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to marble each of the colors into each other. So I'm going to start here before it dries too much. I can already tell my tan is crusting over a bit. And I'm just going to swirl through, create a little bit of a, a blend. This is sort of a semi-marbling and a semi-nest design. <laughs> But that's because we're going to add the texturing of the surf later. And I'm going to do this. So I'm just doing almost like little S shapes back and forth. Almost creates little wave shapes. But I'm going to go through and kind of just create some additional little swirls. Kind of like the ocean is churning up. And I'm going to draw the white through it a little bit. And then I'm going to come in and do that with my darker blue. Now I can see... My icing is falling off my cookie a little bit. I do want to note that you want to make sure your hands are nice and sanitized and clean before you start working with cookies or anything that people are going to eat. I should have started off noting that. And you can go in and play with it a little bit. You don't really need to overwork it like I am. <laughs> Um, because we're going to be covering some of this up with some, some white texturing on top. Yes, I can tell. I think it's my white that's the problem. It's way too loose. And there you go. So, we're going to set this aside to dry. Be careful when you transport them, especially if they're wet. You don't want to tilt the cookie too much and let it let the icing kind of drip off the side and make sure you lay it flat on a surface so when it's dry you should end up with a cookie like this now I'm going to know of course this one already has the the wave texturing on it I got a, a little overzealous when I was creating this collection earlier and I thought I had left one without the texturing so that I could show you guys how to do it because we're gonna to have to wait for that one to dry. What I think I'll do is just kind of show you on a pre-done cookie that could use a little more texture on it, like this one. I can see here, I don't have enough of a wave edge that I want for it to go onto shore. So I'm gonna use this one and then I'll come back in and sand this one to show you how I'm sanding it. All right, so in order to add a little texturing on this, I'm just gonna add almost like a little bit of a wave line with some extra icing. You want a couple of different spots. You don't have to be perfect. It's actually, you can be a little bit messy and globby. You can wiggle it back and forth and create some dimension here. And then you actually wanna let that kind of set up a little bit so if you do two or three cookies at a time by the time you come back to the first one it'll be set where you want it to but you're going to take a paintbrush now this one i use specifically for dabbing and blending and i'm very rough with it you can see it's very splayed and frayed and quite often i actually clean surfaces of course um, work it a little bit more. So I use this paintbrush a lot for what I call dab blending. I think I've mentioned it in a previous cookie video, but it's perfect for this. And so you'll have seen this technique with some other people that do this and then they pull back and create like a little scalloped edge, which is really pretty, but I wanted something a little more foamy and organic. So all I'm doing, I'm pulling back a little bit and I'm just dabbing it and creating that. And I don't care if I go up on my sand a little bit because oceans splash and they have little foam marks when you're on the beach. And that's all I'm doing is just dabbing. And I'm creating little areas on top of my marbling in different sections and I'm pushing it around a bit. You 
And you can clean your brush off in the meantime if you're getting a little too much icing in it. And there you go. And that's how I'm doing uh, little surf waves. Now, you want to let this dry completely before you sand. In this case, I've pre-sanded, of course. But let it dry completely. And then come back in and you can sand your cookie. So in order to sand our cookie, we're going to need our corn syrup, our sanding sugar, and then if you have a tray that you can purchase from Michael's um, and cake stores, this is a bead tray, but it uh, has a little nozzle in it, keeps your surface clean when you're dealing with things that are like sanding sugar and small, small non-pareils. And then you can just pour out the excess back into your bowl. So I'm going to grab my other two paint brushes. One is a dry one that I'm going to clean up my cookie with later. And one is for corn syrup, corn syrup. So we're going to paint our cookie with corn syrup where the sand is going to go. You don't need a lot. Try not to overload your brush to start because you don't want too much corn syrup on it. And I'm just going to feed the corn syrup onto the base of the tan area and then using the brush bristles I'm going to push it in underneath my waves. You can go back in and do your waves after your sand is done but it's easier to do it before. And you can overlap a little bit or push into the little nooks and crannies. Your sand is going to only stick wherever you put this. So try not to get it on your cookie itself because it will stick to your cookie. And corn syrup stays tacky for quite a long time. So you can do, I find up to four cookies at once and then come back and do the sugaring. All right. So I'm just gonna break up the sugar a little bit because there is still a little moisture in it and it tends to clump, which is okay. And we're just going to, oops, we're just going to pour it on the cookie. Don't worry, you're not ruining the cookie. It'll only stick wherever there's dampness or corn syrup. You're going to dump the excess off. You're going to use your dry brush. Now, I don't know if you can see in the video, but that's actually sand color coming through in my surf. And I actually don't mind that because that's how it would be in nat natural uh, surfs. You're gonna just brush off the excess to make sure my edges are covered. And your cookie is going to be a little bit shiny where the corn syrup is until it dries. So give it a good eight to 12 hours and just press it down into the corn syrup a little bit. Um, eight to 12 hours and you'll find that that shininess goes away. And that's what you'll be left with. So, sand cookies, beach surf cookies for a tropical theme. Be sure to follow me on social media. Like I said, I'll put the links in the description of the video below. And I will be sure to post a picture of the entire platter collection with all the tropical goodness over the next couple of days. Happy baking, guys. Bye.